It was very big news when a video entitled We're Married was released by Shane Dawson, a YouTuber most well known for his controversies, and Shane's longtime fiance, Ryland Adams, a YouTuber who is most well known for being Shane's longtime fiance, Ryland Adams. The internet has wondered when these two crazy kids would tie the knot for such a long time that many believed it would never actually happen. But personally, I never lost faith. You see, a a relationship that's based solely on romantic love isn't guaranteed to last. But a relationship based solely on one's fear of dying alone? Well, that seems to be more than enough for Ryland and Shane over here. As they go stumbling through life together like a dog who can't see and a dog who can't hear who help each other find the food dish and avoid getting hit by cars. And guess what? Every dog has his day, which in this case means going to City Hall to sign a marriage certificate, a surprise surprise wedding announcement to family members who don't seem that surprised, or maybe they just don't care. And a box of donuts that elicits a more emotional reaction than either of those two events combined. It's a nice day for a white wedding or whatever color Shane's underwear is after roughly one decade of use. Lube up your ring finger for this special Declaration of Codependence episode of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it down like a mother-in-law who won't stop arguing about their stance on circumcision. I'm talking like that because there's like baby talk in this. Anyway, shouldn't have to connect those dots for you as the viewer. So before we get into it, let me uh, ask you to please give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more Shane Dawson videos like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon for bonus extras, content, and goods. I don't want to say that Shane Dawson videos and breaking them down has been the bread and butter of my channel, but I can admit that they have helped pay for a good portion of the bread and butter that I consume every day at every meal. Thank Thank you, Shane. Are you happy now? No, but over the course of watching these videos, which include all of Ryland's videos, because let's face it, Shane is in them more than Ryland is some of the time. They always start with a, a stupid, nasty title card that's like explaining to us this all happened so long ago that it literally no longer feels relevant. In this case, January 3rd, 2023. I've had several spiritual rebirths by then. Shane is probably still the same idiot. I'm just kidding. Let me not be negative. I did drink one Red Bull before even opening this one, though. We don't know what could happen. If you ask me, one of the most important factors in making healthy relationships of any kind is good communication. And I'm learning to goodly communicate with more people around the world thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. These are the most intuitive lessons I've ever experienced. Way better than public school. No, but for real, these lessons are helping me learn a new language, Spanish, through real life conversations, which is perfect because my whole goal for this year was when I visit a Spanish speaking country again to be at least some degree better at speaking their language than I was when I went in October. Like this February, I'll be taking a cruise that stops in Belize City, Belize, and I can't wait to see actual Maya ruins. Last time when I was in Puerto Vallarta, I got okay in terms of comfort speaking at the 24 hour convenience stores. Also, sometimes I felt myself feeling a little timid and not quite myself, which is no good since I spend so much time buying Red Bull and candy. To me, those are considered lunch foods. It is definitely time for me to start catching up on this goal. Thankfully, Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language within three weeks. It really shows that these are lessons made by real language teachers, not some sort of artificial intelligence algorithm of the nation. These lessons will help you have practical conversations. You'll feel prepared to talk about 
travel, business, relationships, and more. That's almost everything. For example, now I can say, hola television viewers, me amo Nick. Spanish for hello television viewers, my name is Nick. And now when I go into a convenience store, I can say, donde están los Red Bull? They'll be like right behind you in that glowing fridge and I'll say, gracias, mi Red Bull favorito es uh, Red Bull sugar free. You don't wanna miss out having delightful conversations like that, so click the link in the description or scan the QR code to get 60% off your subscription. Thank you so much to Babbel for not only sponsoring today's video, but also fostering my confidence when I travel and want to talk like I do. Shane and Ryland let us know that they just are back in Colorado for a reason. What's the reason? Okay, so your girlies are going back to California tomorrow and in preparation, big news. Well, the news can't possibly be any bigger than the collar of that t-shirt is stretched. How is that even happening? Are you sliding it on legs first, like a pull-up diaper? And is that also the reason why it's always covered in stains? Be on it. Like, that's your own merch, sis. Is this really the way you want to present it? Looking like a newborn horse that couldn't fight its way out of the placenta all the way? I always wear my own merch too, but I have a streamlined neck and reinforced hems. Those are not real claims. My neck is normal size. As long as the guy can fit both hands around it, I'm good. Also, Shane, you know that when you move around like that, I go right to Stephen King. And frankly, I can't help but feel like Shane is faking or at least really pushing his uh, visual excitement about getting this courthouse marriage certificate to combat the narrative that's been going around that he clearly doesn't want to get married since they blatantly argued about that in several other videos. I have a whole playlist of Shane Dawson videos. It's really getting up there in numbers, so you can watch it. Once again, this is supposed to be Ryland's vlog channel. So Shane, why are you stealing the scene, wiggling around back there like Meryl Streep in Mamma Mia? Too much. And uh, as the title indicates, of course, Ryland Island lets us know that they're getting married. They want to get married or for some reason have to get married in a Colorado courthouse or they just want to do it symbolically because they have a house there which is what they're in now. Shane's hair is really long in this. Could it be the added hair volume that's stretching his shirt out or is he suckling on it like a old face cloth? Doesn't matter because obviously Shane and Ryland are planning to have a big wedding like a ceremony with guests. In fact you'd be forgiven for thinking that would occur in this video. But don't forget, Shane and Ryland have been clickbaiting like life events on this channel for over a year now. Like every time they have a goddamn envelope sealed on the journey to having a surrogate child, they make a video being like, our baby is literally in the canal coming down the pipe. Cause they want us all to be like, really? Now I have to watch cause this is like gonna be big news. Not in this case either. So it's not clickbait cause they do get legally married at a courthouse, but but I still found myself disappointed. I don't know how when they describe the most fantastic wedding ever that they will have eventually, but they have to do this legally in the court first. I'm thinking we get a floor here that has like string lights going around. Oh yeah. Back here is a movie theater screen. <gasps> yes, we I was thinking the same thing. Two food trucks and then carnival games. Shane, Ryland, why does your wedding have the same floor plan as a birthday party at Neverland Ranch? I'm sorry, it sounds like it will be a lovely ceremony. The part about the string lights sounded relatively normal. Ryland said, and over here will be the rickety tilt a whirl that we're renting from a county fair. Okay, we'll maybe find a way to add some extra shade to the seating areas because both of you have moms that are 60. Maybe I'm missing something. Or maybe a wedding reception with carnival games is symbolic in some way of Shane and Ryland's relationship. When something traditionally uptight meets something inappropriately childlike. That's the unspoken theme. Their wedding hashtag is gonna be hashtag no hope the number four planet. Oh so Ryland says that logistically it's better for them to get married in Colorado and since this is their last day there they have to do it that day in order to have the wedding of their dreams when they want to in California. To me getting married because it's logistically better in the other state where you live sounds like a big tax related excuse to me. Logistically makes you have to pay less taxes so don't be shy. We can hear your QuickBooks accountant like rap and the coins in his pocket. I said that like it's a thing someone would say, but I don't think that it is. Just me. Me and my Red Bull. 
You know that like stereotype of the drunk guy at a wedding who gives an embarrassing speech? Turns out Shane is kind of just that guy when he's sober in regular life during the morning. You had your old phone, so I was looking through it. There was a note from like 2011 and you literally were like, all I want is love. I was like, oh my God, I should read this in the speech. But then I'm like, is that admitting to going through your personal property in our wedding speech? Probably not a good idea. You're right. It makes more sense to record it in a YouTube video that millions of people will see. Like all your other bad ideas. Shane said, I decided not to humiliate Ryland with this story on our wedding day in front of all of his friends and family because that would limit the humiliation to the wedding day and all of his friends and family. Also, there would be no easy way to show screenshots without pulling out a projector. Eh. That's Shane talking, not me. <laughs> see, Shane could identify when something wasn't a good idea. Take that haters. Shane is capable of self-awareness and he uses it to optimize the distastefulness of everything he says or does. Once again, it is Shane who edits all of these terrible vlogs, which I think is why Ryland's YouTube channel sometimes feels like it's from the perspective of someone who hates him. Snooping through, reading, screenshotting, and posting your partner's notes app journal entries that were written in their early 20s before they even met you is rude enough. But there was not one single reason why Shane had to also highlight the part of this story about Ryland's internal struggle with his addiction to Grindr. He said, all you wanted was to be in love, it's so cute. But the note he's showing on screen is Ryland being like, dear diary, I wish I loved anything as much as I love writing anonymous XOXO, Ryland Adams. Like, girl, you're so passive aggressive for including that part when you didn't even say it out loud. Although, I guess Ryland agreed to having these in the final edit, but he says on camera he really was thinking he wasn't gonna read it for us online or anything because it was that embarrassing and also that vulnerable for him. Presumably that all went out the window because Shane was like, um, I have a funny anecdote about how I invaded your privacy so deeply to find ways to leverage it as a joke about how foolish you are and always have been. Like girl, I am never gonna marry you would be my answer, but we're all different. We're all different. They have huge t-shirt holes. So Shane and Ryland are now deciding how they're gonna announce to the family that they're secretly eloping, even though this is a very common thing to do for people getting married and I don't think that anyone's going to be that surprised because you're like oh yeah that's practical because you don't want to be contingent on having a ceremony you can just have a, a celebration of this wedding you know as whenever you feel like it all comes back to the reveal once again with these Shane Dawson videos and you know Ryland is basically not in charge of the structure of this once Shane gets his hand on it or Ryland who wasn't really a dedicated youtuber before getting with Shane has learned everything about the technique of getting millions of views for garbage from his dearly beloved. Speaking of the world's most romantic couple. I'm wearing the shirt I was wearing when Shane proposed to me. I'm wearing the underwear I was wearing when I proposed. <laughs> because you never change out of the And the underwear. underwear I was wearing on our first date. Shane's had his same pair of American Eagle neon underwear for four years. Which is probably the same length of time it's going to take me to stop having American apparel panic attacks and neon on green nightmares. I'm serious, that might have been the highest degree of exposure to Shane Dawson's penis that a human can withstand without, oh, nope, my body's going into shock. Almost saw his penis, almost saw his penis. Listen, I already find it jarring that Shane Dawson's videos will randomly flash three seconds of B-roll on screen for every 10 minutes of boring talking. So imagine how loudly I screamed when that random flash of B-roll was literally him randomly flashing us with his unbuttoned pants, which are revealed from underneath the jacket tied around his waist? Why does footage of that even exist? Was he showing off his favorite outfits for wandering around children's clothing stores at the mall? I don't know how to explain to you at home how many times it took me to try to say that sentence. Literally embarrassing. Wandering around children, ooh, a mouthful of marbles at the children's clothing store. Shane, pull your pants up because you gotta enter a very important city hall. Again, 
again, I, you can kind of sense that Shane and also Ryland, but less so, are kind of grasping at straws as they go through this, hoping to stumble upon something that makes visually interesting or in some way significant storylines for this piece of content. You can see it in the reveal of how we're going to reveal this to our parents. It's like you can't just have a reveal. You have to decide what the reveal will be and then put it in a lower third on the title. It's like you can't, you couldn't even say like we surprised our family by getting married because like you barely did that. It feels like you're not planning for anything and just choosing random times to like, oh, this will be great to film because it'll get views. Like, I guess this is what they do. This is just what they do now. They just film their lives, which I don't particularly think are that fascinating. And they barely show any creativity, but it's plenty to support their two homes, their multiple pets. And as I just found out through this video that they have alpacas and or llamas or something. Him and Jeffree Star are just always trying to compete with one another by casually being the most Willy Wonka weirdo that they can possibly be. So congratulations, Ryland. Once you read this stupid piece of shit from the government, you're gonna be married to it. The other piece of shit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't think he's a piece of shit. I mean, I don't know. What's the definition of that? Besides the literal one. Therefore, metaphor, always legal, can say what I want. We, we state the information, information given is true and correct and, and believe that, that there exists no, no reason why we should, should not, not be married. married. I like it. That it started hard. a little bit wonky and then you, yeah. you came together. together. <laughs> I really hate to disagree with that hilariously unsolicited feedback from the government employee at City Hall. But mama, the video isn't even halfway over at this point. So I would argue that the wonkiness hasn't even gotten started yet. We passed a little wonky way back at the discovery of Ryland's shame-based grinder obsession. And since then, we've partially seen the basic shape of Shane Dawson which I can only describe as horrifyingly wonky. And that's just based on a description written in one of Ryland's notepad entries that got curiously cropped out. Um, the narrative that Shane wants to push here to show that he's like a hopeless romantic and so cute is like they couldn't decide on a pair of rings. Shane also feels self-conscious about the way that it seems like most rings fit on his finger, which makes sense since he expresses the same feeling of anxiety around most things that he puts on his body. So he's like, I ordered five different rings because I didn't know which one. Let's put on all of them. That I'm not really impressed that he bought five different rings. And based on ooh, the envelope he's pulling them out of, seems like they were purchased at Amazon. But after they make their final signatures, and you know, they took a brief sidebar to put these rings on each other's knuckles to moose knuckle those knuckles together so that they're one fused hoof. <laughs> what even is that that I just said? Not only am I not looking to get married, but at this point in time, after saying that, I would strictly warn people against it. I'm secretly crazy. I'm secretly crazy. It's actually not that secret. If you're willing to sit through a 40 minute video, it's, it becomes very clear. Anyway, they sign their signatures and that's pretty much it. Thankfully, the universe throws us a bone in terms of like just giving us something to hear and see in this audio visual piece. Oh my God. <laughs> Ryland really tried his best to capture that on camera, knowing it would be the only adorable part of this video that didn't feel painfully forced. In reality, that's just the bell they give to city employees so that they can warn security when there are weirdos in the building that need to be escorted out. Which means Shane probably untied his jacket at some point during those vows. So la di da Shane and Ryland take some selfies where they smile like sock puppets. Then they kiss in the hallway once they leave everybody. And they also kiss like sock puppets. So just two of Shane's crusty socks married in heaven. Heaven for you and him. They also decide to like do a thing where Ryland walks down the stairs like a wedding. That's not a thing to like walk down the stairs. You're thinking of the Sex in the City movie and I promise you none of this was that. None of this was even comparable. So let's not f around with that movie, okay? Put some respect on my religion's name. Don't you know that's the movie that I hooked up with some guy from the internet in the theater while watching? Oh, Nicholas. How am I gonna talk about humiliating people when I am humiliating my own people? <laughs> So, Shane clearly thinks he looks fierce with his ring. Maybe he does. I can't tell anymore. I've gone blind. I just see a haze of confusion. And their plan was, as Shane kind of tossed out at the beginning, maybe he'll get a tattoo. We can get matching tattoos. And, you know, that's another thing where he's like, it's going to be the big event that everyone talks about in this video. It's like, no, because it's not interesting. Anyway, the tattoo artist talked them out of it, explaining that those tattoos rub off within two weeks and start to look patchy. So instead, they went to Voodoo Donuts. I've been to a Voodoo Donut 
that's at Universal Studios Hollywood in the City Walk. They have one and the line is always forever long. So if you ever see it when the line's short, you've got to get in there because it's the kind of place that puts like full size M&Ms all over the donuts icing. I live. Anyway, they're talking about the half dozen donuts they bought. Like it's a hilarious fun idea, even though it's like, you know, and they've done this before. Oh, those incredulous sounds. They've done this before. They had a fake fantasy wedding ceremony at Ryland's house with, with Ryland's sister, with Ryland's mom, and they ate ice cream cakes. And it was like just the same thing where they're like, this is like our wedding cake. But ironically, because it's not a real wedding cake, like we'll have one day. And it's like, yeah, why are you making this into a saga of fake cakes? I don't give a fuck. Oh, so the point is all of a sudden Shane has a new meaningful insight to speculate upon because of the employee at that donut shop. And then the boy at the counter was a, a viewer. And then I was like, what's your name? And he said, Justin, I had a crazy memory when I was young. I always thought if I had a kid one day, if I had a son, I would name them Dustin. Dustin Dawson? You don't like it? It's such a unique name. And then for a nickname, Dusty is really cute. Uh, the nickname Dusty Dawson is not cute. If anything, it sounds a little disparaging. Like, are you sure you're not just misinterpreting a memory of elementary school kids making fun of the flaky dead skin on your elbows? Also, Shane loves to act like, oh, I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm like the butch one out of this group, except for when I want the clout of acting more stereotypically queer. That's just my read on it. I'm not a doctor in charge of assigning the truth. The point is, don't tell me, Shane, that you're not fully powdered down and wearing makeup in this. Obviously, standing in that building, you would have gotten a little shiny and someone's touching up their face. Speaking of which, I'm wearing like seven layers of makeup today because I got some new products at Sephora and I needed all of them to be thickly applied <laughs> to my face. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like, oh, I just look this way in the sun. Also, the coincidentally like clandestine sunspot that Shane puts his face in so that his eyes kind of glow, like you're not smart her than anybody because you care about taking pictures in the sunlight. Like he probably thinks that's cinematic. Not me getting mad over things he might th be thinking like, I don't, who cares? Let him burn those retinas out. How should I care? Isn't he the dog who can't see or is he the one who can't hear? Anyway, it's time for that amazing moment where Ryland announces his wedding to his family. Although not Ryland texting the 300 people in a family group chat and just getting that one thumbs up reaction. That's how I let the shopper who brings me orders from Target know that I've got my stuff and they don't need to bother me anymore. See, a thumbs up, I don't have to muddy the water with all of that extra talking that I tend to do. Thumbs up, shut up. So these stupid equivalencies are really gonna put you through the SAT prep school. They're like, these donuts are kind of like our cake. And then they're like, oh, so going from Colorado back to LA is kind of like our honeymoon. And my mom's coming back with us. So it's like my mom's coming on our honeymoon with us. I guess if you want to act like that's something that's happening, I'm kind of embarrassed for you. And in any case, how does going from home to home equate to a honeymoon? Like I get it, California, but I mean, what are you gonna do? Go to Disneyland? No, you're just gonna stand around that same kitchen island, picking apart donuts with your fingers like a dirty little chicken. Shane literally picked through all of these donuts to eat just the icing and then threw the actual cake part back in the box without telling Rylan. Cause Rylan went over to try one of the donuts later that night and says that's when he found them looking like a rat's nest. We've seen Shane kind of harass Ryland by misgendering him in a mocking way, which is also sexist. And basically just making fun of how more stereotypically gay Ryland seems outwardly. And I've never been more offended than I am by watching this donut box be destroyed so casually. I actually need to hear some more verbal abuse for a palate cleanser. That's where we're at. You are so bad at this. Thank you. <sighs> My husband, he really needs to learn how to film. <sighs> you know, Shane, you always do this. And that's some really strongly worded criticism coming from the person who once directed a feature length film whose score on Rotten Tomatoes is currently, actually, they don't even have a number here. It just says this product contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer and reproductive harm. Well, that explains why I gave birth to a slug back in 2020. Can somebody please get a class action lawsuit started? I mean, I would, but I'm already going to be late picking up Sluggy from daycare. <sighs> Still a prettier name than Dusty though. I know that. So this is it. Their last evening, or I guess the morning before they get on a plane back to Los Angeles. They're bringing all the indoor animals back with them, but they have to say goodbye to, you know, Ryland keeps saying the mamas, the mamas, which I think is like baby talk for the llamas. But then at one point they call these alpacas and I'm just like, these 
these motherfuckers came out of nowhere. That's all I know. It probably literally started when they got that statue of a llama and he was like, should I just get llamas? And cause Shane is really using this as the opportunity to push his soft boy persona that we all love so much, which uh, maybe would be fine if he hadn't started out the video with this. There are videos that we sent each other at the beginning of our relationship where, ew, where we were talking to each other and like these weird fake voices. <laughs> I mean, nobody's arguing that you weren't cringy and gross back then, and that will haunt me forever, but I don't see how it was any worse than present day Shane, who we now see literally go on a baby talk tour of his entire home before leaving. We love you so much and we miss you already. Bye bedroom, bye bathroom, bye closet, bye stairs, bye kitchen. We miss you, bye basement. Bye, Barry. We'll see you in a few months. Unbelievable for him to be doing this when he's just leaving the house for a few months like he does several times throughout the year. Like, you're not moving. <sighs> now I'm gonna have to write the governor of California myself because Shane just earned himself another Proposition 65 warning. He's harming my reproductive health by trying to be cute into his mid-30s. And if there's one thing that I'm serious about, it's my repro- <sighs> oh, That was a contraction. Damn it. <sighs> I guess I'm too late. Thanks to this video, looks like Sluggy is gonna have a little bit baby brother or sister or genderless larva. I'm actually excited to welcome they them to the family. Do you realize that unedited Shane Dawson was just wandering around his entire three story home, unbroken on camera, finding a soft voice with little slack lips to say bye to everything? Like why though and why though? This hasn't been interesting. You haven't been interesting. We're all running for the hills. After this, Ryland sits down on his own, which is like the epilogue where he's like, okay, I can't believe I'm doing this. And he starts reading his note to himself. This is, seems to be like the only part of the video that Ryland was able to do without Shane telling him how to hold the camera or chopping it up with his bad editing. Also, you can tell Shane hadn't touched it because they cut out the part talking about the grinder. So basically the note that Ryland had written was like, I always worked so hard to find jobs and blah, blah, blah. But one thing is that I really want love and the perfect boy has never fallen into my lap. It's like, if you're 24 and talking about boys, I'm weirded out by that officially. You are an adult man looking for another adult man. Don't say the boy thing unless it's like specifically a daddy son fetish. Now I'm the rule maker. Now I make the rules. Anyway, Rylan's also like, I'm just so busy because when I'm not on camera, I'm editing my reel or working out. It's like, are you actually writing the grinder profile now? I intend to work hard. I intend to find love. I intend to be in a healthy relationship. Good luck. I intend to do what I know is right for me and I choose happy. We really live, laughed, loved ourselves to sleep that night, didn't we, Ryland? As is wont to happen in these videos, we get, you guessed it, a musical montage to wrap things up. You already know that I feel like Shane's full song, slideshow, musical interludes are included in basically all of his videos or every video that he edits because it's an easy way to fake an emotionally satisfying conclusion to a non-story. But I'll admit, he edits these together so often that he seems like he might actually be getting kind of good at it. I'm serious. Most editors would find it challenging to condense his and Rylan's relationship into a three minute song about settling at rock bottom. Somehow, that's that sequence really helped summarize the flavorless, unsalted story of their love. So I want to propose a toast and offer my most neutral, bland blessings to the happy enough couple. May all your kisses be dry and closed mouth, and may every stranger assume your siblings. It happened! And that's it. They showed us their anniversary date at the end, cleverly the same as at the beginning. Have you heard of such a thing? So that now it's not just the day this vlog takes place, it's also the day they got not quite married cause they're gonna count the other day as the official one once it happens. They show Shane get down on two knees to propose, which uh, I mean, it's weird that you couldn't address the meme. Like that's the funniest thing about your whole life is that you did that and now you're gonna not talk about it. You're just gonna Shane gloss over it. Shane Glosson Dawson? Shane Dawson 
in the green short. Ooh. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me for yet another Shane Dawson getting married installment of Clip Breakdown. I think we'll probably meet here again next time he clickbaits the baby he's cooking up in someone else's body. <laughs> Chose to be respectful there because it's not her fault. Shane wants to put a baby in her. But it is your fault if you don't give this video a big thumbs up because that's really gonna let me know that you wanna see even more Shane Dawson content like this so I can keep riding that bread and butter horse into the night. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I've got new videos. Also, I've got merch and bonus content available on my Patreon. Right now, patrons are voting on the movie we'll be watching in this month's virtual watch party, which is really fun and one of my favorite parts of the week. So many good memories in there. Also, you'll be getting the full routine of this Nick D face as it is today, caked with makeup and also facial oils. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Mwah.